trip, trip, trip. Trip. Trip, come here, watch this. There's big dogs. Ow. There's small dogs. Greedy dogs. No, stop it. And speedy dogs. No, 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 no. Dogs you can't touch. Norman puts a stop to everything. And dogs that love too much. We can't do this every morning, can we? But no matter what the size or the problem... I know that I've done this to him. Graham Hall can fix them all. I'll take on any dog, any size. Super, yeah, that's what we want, come on. Any problem? It's the start of a busy working week for master dog trainer Graham Hall. In his casebook this week, two dogs at war, dividing a family. I don't think they want to get rid of their dog and we don't want to get rid of our dog, so I'm not quite sure how we're going to sort this out. A border collie whose only comfort is his own reflection. If we let him, this would be 24 hours a day. Whose obsessive behaviour is breaking his owner's hearts. I know that I've done this to him. And a possessive little dog that won't let any man... Norman's bitten seven people. ..anywhere near his woman. I don't want to have to choose between a partner <coughs> or my dog. <coughs> Norman! Graham's first stop is a leafy suburb in Surrey. Anyone want a cup of tea? Yes, please where the Pete family set up home so three generations could live in harmony under one roof. I live in one side of the house with my mum and dad and Bella, and then my sister and her husband and their two small children live in the smaller side of the house with Tilly. For a while, life was bliss, until... <laughs> their dogs went to war. They were best of friends, and for a year ago, they started to fight and they started to fight really quite badly and it's just got worse and worse and worse. They will fight at any possible opportunity too, whether it's through a fence, through a grate. <laughs> Whatever they can find to fight each other, they will go mental. And this is what happens if they get either side of a door together. And if they do face off indoors, all hell breaks loose. And not just between the dogs. We spend a lot of time kind of shouting about closing doors. That's what happens when we accidentally do it. <laughs> this here used to be a connecting door into my sister's living room, but unfortunately we've had to totally block it up. Idyllic family days out are also a thing of the past. <laughs> We're going to go up to the house. Tilly, leave. It's just not possible to be able to walk the dogs together. It's just not a fun experience. No. It's something you just and don't do. It's upsetting do. for everybody involved yeah. and stressful for the dogs. <laughs> and if they get together, there is always blood. There's been chunks of skin missing and stuff, so I do worry that like something really serious could happen. Tabitha is also concerned that the warring dogs could have other dire consequences. So if something happened, I would be distraught and it probably would ruin my relationship with my sister and her family. The family is divided about which dog is to blame. We thought, well, it's not Bella. And they said, well, it was quite clearly Bella's fault. And we went, no, it isn't. You can see it's Tilly. Whose fault is it? I mean, I think ultimately we all realise it's, it's neither. <laughs> I don't think it's Bella. When you try and separate them, Tilly will bite you. Bella doesn't. With the dogs having to be constantly pulled apart, son-in-law Andy is terrified the children could be caught in the crossfire. Don't put your hand near her mouth. That's enough. Well, the biggest fear is that they hurt the kids somehow, for me. I'm a bit worried that it goes to the incense and one of them actually does die. You know, one option is to rehome Tilly, but that obviously sent us all into distress. And I imagine if you were asked to rehome Bella. There's no way. I mean, Bella is part of the family. It's easier for us to actually move out, to be honest. And that sounds drastic, but that is. that has been discussed seriously. If Jess and Andy had to move out because we couldn't actually resolve this problem, that would, would break my heart. 
but I don't think they want to get rid of their dog and we don't want to get rid of our dog. So um, I'm not quite sure how we're going to sort this out. Tilly, come. So the pressure's on Graham to get these bitter enemies to call a truce. I need to find out what's caused these two dogs to start fighting. And Dachshunds are famously stubborn, uh, which kind of means they're not the easiest to train, if I'm honest. Hello. Hello, hi. Shall I come in? Yes, please. <laughs> so tell me about the problem you've got then. Almost exactly a year ago, I took them for a walk and Tilly went missing. Uh. And she was missing for about 18 hours. Eventually, she was found trapped in some fencing on a construction site. Right. The minute we put her back in the car with Bella, that was the first fight. How bad is it if they get to each other? It's really bad. Yeah, they bite each other quite hard. Sometimes we get bitten trying to separate them. Right. Um... Yeah, and one day one of the dogs might kill one another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who starts it, do we know? Tilly. They're both fine with other dogs. It's just each other, is it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Can we can we get Tilly, do you think? I mean, Absolutely. let's bring her on Lee, because I don't want to cause a fight, mm -hmm. but I just need to see the problem. Absolutely. <laughs> too close, too close. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's pretty bad. Uh, I mean, they really mean it. I, I think if they did get to each other, they'd... They really would be um, taking lumps out of each other. This isn't handbags at dawn, that's for sure. <laughs> OK. <laughs> right. Having seen how extreme the problem is inside, Graham's hoping outside things will cool down. <laughs> Tilly. If you listen now, you can only hear the one dog, which is Tilly, because Bella's begun to give up. T Tilly, on the other hand, being a Dachshund, she ain't going to give up any time soon. I'm going to pick her up now, I think. All right. Shh. I'm just... She's going to strangle herself. Something oh, changed about a year ago when Tilly went missing overnight, and we'll never know what happened to her. There's no doubt that one really bad experience can change a dog for life. It seems as though the sight and sound, smell of Bella just triggers that every time. So I've got to say, uh, when it's so extreme, it's notoriously difficult to fix. Coming up, can Graham convince two dogs at war to live in peace? OK, that was a step too far. And he meets a border collie whose only comfort is in his own reflection. His personality is completely different. We've sort of lost the dog, haven't we? If it's dressing me this bad, how the hell does he feel? <laughs> Across Britain, master dog trainer Graham Hall helps desperate owners with their badly behaved pets. Today, he's in Surrey dealing with a pair of warring dogs whose constant sparring is driving a wedge between two sides of the Peat family, and their dreams of living together in multi-generational harmony have turned into a nightmare. One is really worried that at some point they will get together, possibly kill one another. But before Tilly's traumatic disappearance a year ago, the pair used to be pals, and Graham believes that relationship can still be rescued. We don't know what happened to her when she went missing. But that clearly changed something in her mind. <laughs> Tilly is definitely the one that started. That's exactly what I've seen. Yeah. We, we need to get them used to being near each other so that we can then build their relationship back up again, you know? Yep. So I think we should go to somewhere neutral. If we can get them walking together outside, then we've, we've got a big building block going forward. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be surprised if we ever got them out on a walk not fighting ever, just because they can't be anywhere near each other. They don't even have to be in the same room to fight. OK, that's fine. Skeptical's good. <laughs> Prove me wrong, please. Well, that's, I like a challenge. <laughs> if I can get these two dogs walking outside calmly, there's a good chance we can translate that into good behaviour inside the house. Me and you, we're going to go together with, uh, with Tilly, and we're going to go that way. The aim here is 
to get the two dogs walking within sight of each other and not reacting. So they're about to come into sighting. As Bella is triggering Tilly's anxiety, leading to her lashing out, Graham's introducing a doggy form of immersion therapy. So there's Bella mm -hmm. in the distance. Uh, now, she's seen her, without a doubt, because you can see her then go right. like this, right? By gradually reducing the distance between the two dogs, Graham's hoping that Tilly's anxiety levels can be controlled. In a minute, if she, if she keeps pushing forward, no, she's going to get one of them. Stop and if she stop. does get riled up, no. stepping in front will snap her out of it and calm her down. Good girl. This is the closest we've been. Yes. Now, Bella stopped to look back there. Yeah. And she's now getting agitated. So you see now, yes. looks like she's yeah. beginning to go. Ah. So th hey, hey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come here. Good. So then the barking was at me. Right. And then as soon as I called off the fight, I went, all right. It's ended in no time. Yeah. So Graham's shown that Tilly's anxiety can be controlled, but can Jess follow his lead? <laughs> no, yeah, really no, nice. so now she's so. pulling. So right, so step in no. front. That's it. And no. again. And no. again. No. And again. No. Wait for it. No. The other <laughs> thing is, if you just stop for a second, look at me. You started here, you've gone to there. How did that happen? <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. With Jess okay. keeping her calm and carrying on, Tilly is inching ever closer. No. Oh, good well done. Girl. That was good. This is what we're after. We're almost alongside. Yeah. Oh, we better are. looked. And <laughs> when there's a blip... That's it. Well done. Good. You've got it. Jess has it under control. There we go. By repeating this simple plan, the sisters have got these once warring dogs to enjoy each other's company. That's it. This is great. I think we both feel we can control the dogs more quickly. Yeah, I think we have more of an understanding of when it happens and why it happens than we've ever done before. Well, we've seen quite a bit of progress. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Pretty, yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. Sorry, did you just say you were impressed? Being proved wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's good. What do you think they're going to be like in the garden? Yeah, my scepticism is back a little bit. <laughs> OK. Um, it's an odd area because it's kind of both of their territories. Let's see. Right. OK. We'll get the dogs. Graham may have got these once bitter enemies off the warpath and on the road to friendship, but now he wants to move things onto home turf. Oh, look, look how close they are. Come on. Well done. Good. Yeah, well Good. done. I think that's yeah. right. Well yeah. done. Woo. Well done indeed. Good. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Everything is going perfectly to plan. Do you want to go and, and sit over there next? Jess, if you carry on walking round just the one time, let's see what happens. Sit. No. 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 But when no. the dogs come face to face... No. 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 There's nothing Jess or Tabitha can do to calm them. No. 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 Oh. OK. We're, we're clearly not going to fix this today. That was a step too far. Let's put the dogs away and then we'll come back we'll have a chat. In a heartbeat, Graham's right back at square one. Well, it was all going swimmingly well. <laughs> How do you two feel now? Stressed. Defeated Very a bit. Stressed. I was hoping that they'd be able to sit down. Shall I let you into a secret? What? I was kind of hoping that myself. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to say my work here is done. Clearly it's not. Calling it a day, Graham wants the Pete family to continue working on bringing the dogs together outside while he works out what to do next. I'm determined to get this family united together under this one roof and not divided as they are at the minute by these two fighting dogs. There's no doubt it's going to take more time than I thought. A hundred and thirty miles up the road, there's another family in need of help. Well, this morning I'm in Coventry and I'm here to see a border collie called Thor and he's got a really strange compulsion. Whilst he might be named after the god of thunder, Thor is a lot more like Narcissus, obsessed with his own reflection. Oh, there you are. What are you doing? Hey, come here. Thor, come here. Come here a minute, look at me. Look at me. If we let him, this would be 24 hours a day, every day. I'm just going to turn this around, because I can't bear with him just standing and staring at himself. 
Thor will stare at himself in anything reflective, picture frames, the oven, the television's back patio door, anything he can see a reflection in, he will. Three-year-old Thor's behaviour started a year ago, and no matter what Kirsty and Rory do... Thor! ..they can't break the spell. He's just not interested. We've sort of the, lost the dog, haven't we? Yeah, though? his personality is completely different to before Loki arrived. Thor was a happy and well-adjusted dog, but Kirsty and Rory thought he'd like company, so brought in Loki. Since then, he's shunned the family, and they think that his inner turmoil at being ousted by Loki is causing this silent protest. Bringing Loki in is obviously what's made Thor go like this. Thor! Come here! Come, come, come. Yeah! Oh. That was, what, less than five seconds, yeah, and he's, he's gone again. It's really tough seeing him so stressed. You don't want to see any animal going through that. Thor, that's enough. Come on, buddy. When he's at his worst, it breaks my heart. The physical upset that you can see the dog going through is then just mirrored by Kirsty. And if it's stressing us and stressing me this bad, how the hell does he feel? And the couple are going to extreme lengths as they desperately try to get Thor to re-engage with them. You need to turn those frames around as well. Yeah, I'll have to... Yeah, I'll, he's going to stop. You'll have to drop that down, cos he'll be able to see it at the bottom of the voice. Literally, the only way we get any peace in this house is by covering everything yeah. over. Yeah. And then he goes straight to the kitchen unit. Like, you cover everything up in here, and now he's gone out there. Well, you have to, we just have to shut the back door and shut the, shut the curtains as well, then. We've literally punched ourselves into darkness. It's the only way we can deal with it, though. I really don't know what to do. I don't know how much longer we can carry on. Neither of the dogs are going anywhere. They're both staying and they both stay for good. I want nothing more to be able to have a cuddle and can't because he, this is his life. I don't think any dog should feel like that. Um, it's particularly heartbreaking because I, I know that I've done this to him. Come here, Thor. Now, I think Thor's behaviour is, you know, potentially it's a big deal because Border Collies are, um, I mean, they're lovely, they can be very loving. Um, also a little bit bonkers, if I'm honest. They can sometimes be neurotic. I can't remember I've ever seen one just stock still looking at himself in the mirror all the time. I'd really like to get my old dog back, you know? I'd like to have him back being the dog that he was. Hello, hello Kirsty. Hi. Nice hello. You. Hello, hello, hello. You're come nice. Shall I come in? Yep, yeah, come on in. No. Hello. Well, you're not Thor, are you? Who are you? <laughs> That's Loki. Loki. Hello, Loki. You're a bundle of fun, you are. Meanwhile, Thor over there. He's doing his thing, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. And that's what he does. So the first thing he did was go straight over yeah, there. Yeah, literally yeah. not even interested in it. So he's just else. looking at himself. Who came first then? Was it Thor? Thor. Yeah. Right. And, and he has only started doing this since we've had him. Right. Okay. So what was Thor like before Loki came along? He was the f fun, loving, you know, centre of attention dog. Yeah, it was no no trouble at all. Uh, how is this making you feel? Stressed. Yeah. <laughs> really stressed. I can see that Kirsty's really quite upset by this because, you know, she said she feels guilty. Um, she's kind of messed up Thor's life by getting Loki, but I feel sorry for her. Well, I can't fix the problem until I understand what's going on in Thor's head. And to get inside Thor's head, Graham's rigged up remote cameras to gain an understanding of his reflective obsession. Thor, on your bed. Go on, on your bed. Sit down. So he's on his bed, giving a little tickle, which is quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, as soon as Rory stood up, then Thor went, right, I'll go back to my reflection. Yeah, you see, things aren't what they seem here. He's not sort of straight on looking at a mirror. He's actually looking at an angle, doing it again. Collies do stare quite a lot. They stare to get what they want. And he's staring at them, just not directly. Whilst Kirsty and Rory believed that Thor was obsessing over his own reflection, Graham doesn't. And he wants to prove it. I'm, what I'm trying to do here is sort of isolate where the problem is. So if we take Rory out of the situation, 
have we still got a problem? Rory, do you want to come up? Yep, not a problem. You do sit. Sit. Looks like being a detective, this. Soon as Kirsty stops giving Thor attention, he's gone wandering off. Oh, yeah, Thor, Thor. Hey. Next, Graham removes Kirsty, leaving just Thor and Loki. Right, let's see what he does when Mum and Dad are out. Well, he's pacing about a bit. <laughs> it's a different picture altogether. This is what I thought might happen. There's no people in the room anymore, and he stopped looking at reflections. Right, I've seen enough now. Coming up, Graham attempts to crack Thor's mirror obsession. Give me a minute, look at me. And meets a woman looking for love. Hello. Oh, he's not happy, is he? Whose dog is scaring off any suitor. I don't want to have to choose between a partner or my dog. <laughs> In Coventry, Master Dog Trainer Graham Hall is with Thor, a border collie apparently obsessed with his own reflection since his owners bought a new dog a year ago. I know that I've done this to him. Using remote cameras, Graham's observed Thor's obsessive behaviour and come to a remarkable conclusion. Right, I've seen enough now. Thor's not depressed, but a master manipulator. Now, here's the big thing. Yeah, looking at himself in the mirrors. He's staring at you. <laughs> no. Yeah. No way. He is. <laughs> as soon as you're both out of the equation, like that, he stopped looking at the reflection. Gosh. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's all about attention seeking. What he's done is he's discovered a new way of getting the attention that drained away when Loki turned up. So he's really clever. I'd have never had that. I'd have never got to there. That is that is a million he's miles so away. He's so smart, though, isn't he? <laughs> now he's been playing you. Yeah, that's really interesting. Border collies, one of the ways they get sheep to move is to stare. They freeze, and if you stare at a sheep long enough, it gets spooked and it moves, and then it's like, right, off we go. OK, so we're not terrible owners, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just sheep. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah. Well, in his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like, come on, play the game. Wow. That's amazing. That, that is, isn't it? I'd that's, never thought of that's it that quite... way. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a reaction like that. Um, Rory was literally, no, really? So, yeah, good old Thor. He's been playing him for a year. That makes me feel so relieved because this whole time I've been blaming myself for getting another dog, bringing another dog into the house. And we've been fretting that he's stressed about this, that, or the other. He's just trying to get our attention, basically. Graham's solution to unpicking this deep rooted behaviour is shockingly simple. You know, before when we were having a chat and you said, we, We've tried everything, the one thing you've not tried is do nothing. No. No. Graham believes that by actively ignoring Thor's behaviour, he'll soon get the message that he won't get attention from it and get bored of his own face. So, as long as he's looking in the reflection like that, don't even look at it. Yeah. And when he looks at them instead... But if he does this... Praise. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Now, he's gone back to the reflection. Doing nothing may sound easy, but Kirsty and Rory's behaviour is just as ingrained as Thor's. Can they resist the temptation? So hard not to look at him. <laughs> Good, boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. After just a few minutes, the signs Graham's technique is working. Good boy. Hey, come here. Come yeah. Now he's thinking. Yeah, he's got a choice to make now. Let's see what he Good does. Good boy. Now he made the wrong choice, but that's OK. You could see the thinking there, couldn't you? But Thor's not about to give up his game of stare so easily. I've noticed he's coming further away from it when he's doing to try it and as get well. More attention, so isn't it? It, it's like negotiating. And it's obvious he doesn't like being ignored. What's he going to do now? He's barking, right? OK, well, that ain't going to work either. Ignore him. That's it. Are you getting desperate? Yeah. Yeah, see? I mean, he doesn't know what to do now. That literally was, look, I'm barking, you have to do something. The problem is, at this stage, if he'd been doing it for this long, we'd be shouting at each other. Hey, come, come here. Come on, then. Yeah. 
Look at that. Good, Good lad. How much quicker is it now, though, eh? Yeah. yeah, it's like seconds rather than what feels like hours. Mm. Look at that. Good boy. He literally Good walked boy. up to the cabinet, took one <laughs> look and went, what am I doing? Good boy. Well done. Suddenly, there's a breakthrough. Great, here we go. For the first time in a year, Thor has left his reflection behind him and rejoined the family. This is just completely unheard of. Yeah. Once so obsessed with reflections, Thor would barely acknowledge anyone, but with Graham's help, he's rejoined his family. It really is amazing. I never thought I'd get him back in such a short space of time. Rory, you look emotional. I didn't think we'd get this far today. Yeah. No regrets about getting Loki now? No, none whatsoever. For me, it was really stressful with Thor the way he was, but thank you for sending us down the correct path. Yeah, you're welcome. We're super grateful, thank, thank you. Very much. Good boy. You know, this was really one of a kind. It, it can be quite an emotional job doing this, and there was a couple of moments there at the end, watching them all on the settee, where you're like, oh, this is, this is really lovely. Next, Graham is heading south to Hereford, where six months ago, 28-year-old Elise moved into her new home and wanted someone to keep her company. That someone is Chinese-crested Norman. He is so loving. Give me a kiss. Oh, boy. And he just gets so excited to see me. I love Norman to bits. This pair are inseparable. Me and Norman have matching outfits and matching accessories. We like to match most days. <laughs> Whilst this couple have settled in together, Elise wants more than just Norman in her life. I'd really love to be able to find somebody. There's just one problem. Mark, you know it's Mark. <laughs> Norman won't let any man anywhere near his woman. No. I can't date, I can't have any kind of love life whatsoever. Norman puts a stop to everything. Norman, come on, that's enough now. This will go on until they've gone. It's just made life really, really hard work to be. And Elise's possessive little man has a surefire way to see off any potential suitors. I recently went on a date. Norman pounced and bit him through his jeans wait, 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 wait. and cut off his leg. He hasn't been back, so Norman definitely sorted that one out for me. And it's not just Elise's dates. Norman's bitten seven people on my last count. He has bitten my brother, my heavily pregnant sister. Um, he's bitten my friend. Suddenly, one day, he just went for her. The bite really hurt. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> it does make me nervous. Don't scare me, Norm. <laughs> It's just getting worse and worse. No. Nothing can come into my life now. It's literally just me and him, and I know he loves that, but I don't love that. I need more than just Norman. I don't want to have to choose between a partner or my dog. And at this rate, if I have to wait till Norman dies, <laughs> I'm going to be well into my 40s. No. Now, the thing about Chinese crested dogs is they're not Chinese. They probably originate from either Africa or Mexico, but they were called that because Chinese sailors use them on their boats to kill rats. One of the things I do see with Chinese crested is they form a really tight bond with their owner, and this problem is not unusual for the breed. With Norman's reputation for being a man-hater, Elise isn't taking any chances today. The muzzle's on for Graham. Hello. Hello. Oh, blimey. Well, that one is... He's not happy, is he? No. Nice to meet you. Hi. Blimey, he's aggressive for a little dog, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a good bark, isn't he? That again. He might be small, but, boy, I mean, I counted six times there. He, he would have bitten me, you know, through my jeans if it wasn't for that muzzle. Oh. 
Normally I'm saying, tell me about the problem. But I don't think you need to tell me very much at all, really. I can see it. He's like, this bloke will go for soon if I keep barking, because that's what he does. He never stops. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Norman's refusing to back down, but Elise has a trick to entice him. Ah, right. So what happens here, then? <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Come on. There you go. So he's barking his head off, so to get him to stop, you pick him up, give him a treat. Bribe him, yeah. Yeah, bribe him, or reward him, perhaps. I mean, the interesting thing is, you see him now like that, could have looked like a little baby in your arms. He's a sweet thing, isn't he? Mm. So what's he like when people aren't around? He is attached to me the whole time. He is right. so needy. Yeah, needy's a word that I sort of associate with Chinese crests. Oh, really? They, they like to make that bond with you. Is that where he sleeps at night? So, yes, he sleeps on the crate most of the time. If I feel like he's had a little bit of a bad day, I do let him come upstairs. OK. But before Norman is allowed in bed, Elise insists he dresses for the occasion. So these are actual baby graves. Got to see this. You see, most dogs will be going bananas now. He doesn't mind having his clothes on. Yeah, you've trained him to do that. I'll sure. grant you that. <laughs> That's the most important thing. <laughs> now, I have been known to say that people baby their dogs a bit. But this lady's putting baby grows on a dog. Graham suspects that treating Norman just like a baby <laughs> might be adding fuel to the fire. He's the sort of dog that's going to be very attached to her anyway. The breeder like that, but she's really supercharged that. Now, time for some home truths. I mean, to all intents and purposes, he's your jealous boyfriend. Right? It's not what I need. <laughs> no, you've created the problem because he's so bonded to you, so close to you, that when you put him down, He's starting to feel unsure of himself, and his answer to that is to attack and get rid of everybody. So you're not allowed anybody in the house, because he said so. But here's the thing, you've created that, Alice. I knew you were going to say that. He needs to understand that what he's doing isn't acceptable. Norman needs to know that Elise is not his property and that she decides who should come near her, not the other way round. We're going to teach Norman to watch Alice on command. She's going to say, watch. He's going to look at her, and then he's going to get rewarded for that. Couldn't be simpler. By getting Norman to watch Elise, he'll learn that she's the boss and to look to her on how to behave. And Graham believes Norm's devotion to her is key. What I noticed before is there's this real connection between you, so let's use that in the training. You were using a treat before to try and to get him to stop barking. You're rewarding the wrong behaviour. Oh. And this is the first thing Graham needs to reprogram. But will he be able to gain Norm's trust? Good boy. No. But at the first sign of friendly behaviour... What's this thing? Good. ..he gets rewarded. Good boy. If he looks at me, he gets a little treat. He's beginning to trust me. Well, this is progress. Now what we're going to do is link the taking the treats to the behaviour I want. This time, Graham wants Norman's attention, but will he listen? Watch. Good. There you go. Clever boy. Now, watch. Good boy. With the help of tasty treats, the watch command is sinking in. Watch. Good boy. Watch. Good boy. I can see in his eyes he's gone, hang on a minute, I see how this game works. After just a little bit of training... Watch. ..Norm is giving Graham his undivided attention. Uh, has he ever taken a treat from a stranger before? Um, never. Never. <laughs> it has never happened. Norman, watch. Good boy. Can now. <laughs> the question is, can Elise copy Graham's success? Watch. Don't say watch unless he's looking at you. Watch. See his ears twitch then. Oh, good boy. Perfect. You a clever it. boy. But now for the real test. <laughs> this morning, Norm would have oh, seen off right. any yeah. man that came to the house. So, can Elise get a gentleman caller through the front door without Norm attacking him? <laughs> Come on. Ah. <laughs> no. It's not a great start, but with Graham's guidance... That's it, get round him and make him move, that's it. Come on, then. Uh -uh. 
at it. Norman, Norman, watch, watch. Oh, well done, Alice. Norman watch. backs down. Good boy. Come on then. Well, he's listening to you, look now. Come on. Look at the difference. Oh, good boy. After six months of Norm calling the shots, Elise is deciding who comes through the front door and he's allowing a man to relax in her company. So what normally happens then, right? Well, normally he would go and straight away go to bite me and then be barking. I mean, even yesterday, he actually bit me on the back of my leg. So this time yesterday, was it? This time yesterday. I actually cannot believe the difference. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Good. He is now, but you're about to, about to pop a car. <laughs> so I guess, cheers. Cheers. What an improvement. It's like a different dog, isn't it? Yes. So there's half a chance you might not be single forever now, then. I know, and I can't blame on Norman, can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, this morning, Ellis thought she had to make a choice, really, between her dog and a bloke. Be a good boy. And I think she's realised now, doesn't have to make that choice. She can have both. Coming up... That's enough. Graham returns to the war between Tilly and Bella. It's infuriating. You're all on the same team. But can the white flag ever be flown? Tilly. <laughs> it's the end of Graham's working week, and he's returning to Surrey for his toughest job yet. <laughs> To end a war between two bitter rivals, whose dogfighting is driving a wedge between three generations, all living under one roof. It's easier for us to actually move out, to be honest. That would be a dreadful solution. Last time, Graham managed to get Bella and Tilly walking together without go. a brawl. But back on home turf, there was a face-off in the garden. That was a step too far. This time, he has an even greater challenge convincing these arch enemies that they can enjoy each other's company in the family home, where the problem is at its worst. I've got a huge battle with this one, but it's a, it, it's a battle I've got to win, because if I don't, it, it'll divide a family. I, I just hope that they've been practising what I taught them last time, because, well, frankly, if Bella and Tilly aren't getting on outside, chance have I got inside them. Graham's arrived just in time for the morning walk, so he can see if the family have been practising what he preached. And we're going for a walk. <laughs> Worryingly, things descend to chaos as the two sisters battle to control their dogs. You weren't doing anything. I tripped over and nearly tread in the dog poo. It's not dog poo, it's badger poo. Right, just walk side by side. To be honest, this is just as bad as it was when I left, really. <laughs> Do you want to take over Tilly for a minute, just see if that makes any difference? OK, well, let's change sides then. But with the grandparents calmly stepping in, they swing things around. <laughs> it's like, no nonsense. No, you don't need that. We don't need to eat. We in the garden. Nope. No. Absolutely not. Good girl. Good girl. And now, finally, they're starting to walk nicely. So, <laughs> what do you reckon? It's infuriating. It started off really quite badly, but we got there. You did. That's the point. Yeah. Jess started with the lead, and then Mike and I were trying to take over. That's what happened. It's incredibly patronising <laughs> and annoying. Yeah. Quite frankly. But you did fall over, and that's why I tried helping Jess. So just, yeah. <laughs> right. Ding ding. Round two. <laughs> but the point was, you were right. You got there in the end. Of course, I'm here to train the dogs, but I'm also here to bring this family back together. But if they can't be calm outside with the dogs, how am I going to fix the problem inside? Now, the last time I brought Bella and Tilly face to face, I realised that Tilly's not always the instigator, because if one of them kicks off, they both kick off. So I'm going to find a way of keeping them both calm at the same time in the same place. Now, I've got a plan, but I need to test the theory first. Well, I think first things first, I think you girls should have a go, really. Um, because, well, the old folk took over, didn't they, really? And, um, you didn't get to show me what you can do. Graham wants the sisters to slowly approach each other to work out the exact trigger points for each dog. Right, so far, so good. Bit nearer. There you go. Right. OK. Don't rev her up. Hey, hey! No. That's it. Well done, Jess. No. 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 
what I find interesting here is that Tilly's actually coming down quicker, so Bella's carrying on. I think the trick might be to bring Bella in towards Tilly, so Tilly's already in a calm place, and then we can focus on just getting Bella not to kick off as we bring the two together. That's better. Jess, do you want to grab a seat first, just on, on the edge there, see it? With Jess on the sofa keeping Tilly calm, Tabitha can slowly approach. Right, take another sort of half step forward. That's it. Are we getting there? If you just sit on the edge there, there you go. And if either dog kicks off... Oi. Tilly. They're immediately removed. No. When everyone's chilled out again, they repeat. All right, do you want to move in a bit more? That's it. Good girl, Bella. That's it, watch her. Do you want to take a pew on the arm of the settee? That's it. Good girl. As long as she doesn't perceive that Bella's doing something that makes her feel threatened, you don't get a reaction from her. <laughs> That's it. Eventually, Tilly realises any bark will mean she's removed from the sofa. That's better. And the message finally sinks in. Good girl, Tilly. All right. Well, this is a bit of a contrast of five minutes ago. Uh, guys, you want to come and grab a seat? Incredibly, oh. after a year of being separated, the family, with dogs included, are finally reunited. We had a telly. <laughs> This is watching right. TV, no? Hey, this is all right. I think it's amazing what we've, what you've achieved, just by making us much calmer, really. Mm. I think brilliant, and it will only get better because we know what to do now because you've told us what to do, and yeah. we can build on it. It's been hard fought this one, but we've got there in the end. It's lovely to see that whole family sat on the sofa and two dogs that are nice and calm and happy. Three generations under the same roof, all happy, and nobody has to even think about rehoming a dog. And no, nobody will be rehomed, and I haven't got to kick my daughter out of the house either, so that's good. <laughs> Hopefully, we can carry on and channel Graham when he's not here. <laughs> In Hereford, Norman's behaviour has improved so much that Elise has started dating again, and he hasn't bit any of them. In Surrey, Bella and Tilly's friendship is blooming, and the Pete family say they can finally enjoy spending time together once more. In Coventry, Thor's obsessive staring at reflections has had a complete turnaround. It's a massive, massive improvement. Everything's uncovered, and he's just sat here quietly with us. So we're really, really pleased. Just want to say thank you for everything. If you think your badly behaved dog could do with Graham's help, then why not get in touch? Details can be found at www.channel5.com forward slash get involved. Thank you.